What's going on everyone? Austin John Plays here and today I'm going to be talking about all the amiibo unlocks that you're going to be having in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. In this video, I'm going to be going over what amiibos can be used, what outfits can be locked, some information you need to know about the outfits being unlocked in Tears of the Kingdom, how to efficiently scan amiibos, and the exclusive items that you're going to be getting from them. Tears of the Kingdom allows you to scan pretty much every single Nintendo amiibo that they've ever released, all of the Super Smash Brothers ones, Mario ones, so on and so forth, to receive a small amount of items. However, any that are directly related to The Legend of Zelda, you're going to be getting better items and you're going to be getting some exclusive unlocks. The following amiibos are going to be supported which includes the six Super Smash Brothers amiibos, the sixth 30th Anniversary Links, the 30th Anniversary Zelda, the Twilight Princess HD Wolf Link, the Breath of the Wild amiibos including the Archer Link, the Champions behind me, the Guardian who's in the backdrop over there, Zelda and Lawfung from Skyward Sword HD Switch, the Link's Awakening Nintendo Switch amiibo, and there is also the brand new Tears of the Kingdom amiibo that will not be included in this video since I don't have it yet. <laughs> And I think that's it. I think that's all of them. The very first thing I want to say is you have to progress in the game until you actually reach the surface of Hyrule Kingdom, which, uh, depending on your gameplay, may take between one and three hours. And then make sure you go to options and make sure you have amiibo enabled. Right now I have pro mode on, that way just it's a little bit cleaner and nothing else is really interfering. I do recommend doing this, especially your first time next to a stable, because at stables you're going to be able to register your opponent if you have the Super Smash Brothers link and the Twilight Princess Anniversary link. Those two are going to be giving you opponent the first time you scan them. You have to register them, otherwise you're just going to keep getting opponent every time that you scan them. If you hold L, you're going to be able to choose Amiibo down here, and then all you need to do is hold the Amiibo up to your NFC receiver on your Nintendo Switch controller, which it's gonna be right here on the Pro Controller, right where the Switch logo is. And on the Joy-Cons, I think it's on top of the right Joy-Con stick? I don't know, if you you could try it, you'll, you'll figure it out. Let's talk about the outfits that you unlock. If you, say for example, have the Link's Awakening Link and you go to scan him, there's a very slim chance you're going to be getting one out of three pieces of armor that are unique to this Link. However, if you do not have this Link, you can find it in the base game. I'm going to be covering that much more in detail later on. Trust me, you're many, many, many hours away from being able to find the chests that contain that armor. However, as soon as you start off the game, if you want to, you can scan this amiibo for a chance at that armor. However, once you obtain it in game, either from the amiibo or from a chest underground, I'm almost certain that you're not able to get it from that amiibo again. Once you obtain it once from an amiibo, you can't get it again. That's my observations based off of more than two hours of testing this exact thing. This is going to be the Of The Hero set, which is obtainable with the 8-bit Link amiibo. This is the Of The Time set, which you can get from the 30th Anniversary Link amiibo, as well as the Super Smash Bros. Young Link amiibo. This is the Of The Wind set, which you can get from the 30th Anniversary Link amiibo. And I think you can get it from Toon Link Smash? Not 100% on that one, because once you unlock it with one, it's not going to drop for the other, so... It, it, it's a lot messier than it was for Breath of the Wild. This is the Of Twilight set that you can unlock with the Twilight Princess Anniversary Link, as well as the Super Smash Brothers Link, and I think it can also be unlocked with Wolf Link. I'm not too sure about that. There's no Wolf Link to, to join you in the game, by the way, just in case you didn't know that. And this is the Of the Sky set, which you can get from the Skyward Sword 30th Anniversary Link. I just don't have the pants for this outfit, but it's fine because they look the same as all the other pants. Okay, that's the boring ones out of the way. Now is the awesome one, which is Majora's Mask Link. You can unlock the Fierce Deity Armor. All of the amiibo-based outfits require star pieces in order to upgrade, so they're pretty darn expensive. If you have Sheik from Super Smash Bros. Amiibo, you can unlock the Sheik Mask. 
If you have the Revali amiibo, you're going to be able to get yourself the Va Meadow Divine Helm. If you have Daruk, you're able to get the Va Rudanya Divine Helm. Mifa is going to be able to get you the Va Ruda Divine Helm. And Urbosa is going to be able to get you the Va Naboris Divine Helm. All four of these helms are exactly the same in appearance as they were in Breath of the Wild. You can also get them all in game. I believe there's a side quest associated which e with each of the four. However, you can just stumble across the chest and some of them are readily available. So I am gonna be making a video on how you could find the four of these somewhat early in the game because their buffs are actually really helpful. There's also a fun little Easter egg with the, uh, the four different regions. And if you picked up the Link's Awakening Switch amiibo, you can get of Awakening, which is this enormous mascot head, and it's hysterical, and I love it. You can also get this in the overworld with a quest line, so you don't have to have these amiibos for any of these outfits. Keep in mind, like I said, once you either get it from the amiibo or from in-game, I'm fairly certain the amiibo does not drop the armor once again. However, if you have it and then you sell it, you can get it later with Pose. As far as weapons, using a bunch of these amiibo are going to be getting you some exclusive weapons. I'm only going to do a brief mention on what they are because that's probably not why you're here for this video. What was the Goddess Sword has now been rebranded to the White Sword of the Sky. Power of 24, you get it from an in-game quest as well, so it's not exclusive to an amiibo. The 8-bit link is going to be getting you the Sword of the Hero, which has just been renamed from sword, which makes a lot of sense because that was a little confusing. The Sea Breeze Boomerang you're going to be getting from Wind Wakers. The Fierce Deity Sword you're going to be getting from Majora's Mask as well as an in-game quest. The Bagoron Sword you're going to be getting from Ocarina of Time. And what was the, uh, the Sword of the Six Sages, which was the Ganondorf amiibo? That is now the Dusk Claymore. You can fuse weapons to these. So, say for example, right here I took a Bagoron sword and I fused a Lionel Horn to it, and that is pretty awesome looking, to say the least. And then I fused a different Lionel Horn to this one, and again, they look pretty awesome. There was one last thing that I wanted to talk about, which is a bow unlock. In Breath of the Wild, it was called the Twilight Bow. However, now it's just called the Dusk Bow. They did the same thing that they did with Ganondorf's Claymore. And also, its distance has been nerfed considerably. Instead of it having a range of, I think it was like 8,000 or something ridiculous like that, it's now just a really far shot. Maybe it's 80. If, if you don't know, most bows are 20. Some bows like Yiga Duplex Bow is 30, I believe. And then like the Swallow Bow and the Rito Bows and the Golden Bow were all 40. And then even like the bow at the end of the last game was a range of, I think, like 400. And then the toilet bow was 8,000. It's considerably longer than a regular bow, but it's definitely not that infinite shot that it used to be. As far as shields go, there is, I believe, only one, which is this, which is the Sea Breeze Shield. When it comes to scanning your amiibos, the game is designed for you to do it once per day. And honestly, with the various weapons and shields that you get, and if you're doing this at the beginning of the game, you're going to be having a limited inventory. So doing it once per day seems like a fairly efficient way for you to just kind of stay on top of things. You get some arrows, you get some food materials, you get a little bit of this, a little bit of that, right? However, you probably want to just like spam through all of it, right? If you have your amiibos or NFC cards or whatever programmable near field communication medium that you have have with this amiibo information all you need to do is go ahead put down a hard save scan the amiibo or all of your amiibos in one big shot whatever you want to do if this is not the item you want all you want to do is go ahead go to load do not load the autosave because now it auto saves after you scan an amiibo. Instead, load up your hard save. Loading up your hard save, all you have to do is scan the amiibo again and you're not going to get the same thing. I mean, you could get the same thing, but you're not programmed to get the same thing. There we go. I didn't get the same thing, just like that. I'm going to get rid of this flame emitter shield. Now, say for example, that was something I wanted. From here, I'm going to be putting down another hard save. You want to close the game out, go into the system settings, go down to date and time, and just change it one day forward. Once you load the game up, take your amiibo, scan them again, 
Open up your chest. Pretty simple stuff. Actually, there's not a bad weapon for the beginning of the game, that's for sure. And yeah, because you are now seeing as being on a different day, you're allowed to scan your amiibo like this. And if you're an absolute completionist and if you want to do one big string of scanning all of your amiibo for all of the different paragliders, if you go to your key items and you look down, you're going to be having your paragliders here. There are 21 unique paragliders from Amiibo, not including the Tears of the Kingdom Amiibo, which later Austin is going to talk about that. There are five very similar Link looking outfits. There's the Of Awakening set, the Fierce Deity set, the Sheik Mask, and the Four Divine Helms. So all in all, you're going to have a total of 26 pieces of Amiibo clothing. Do keep in mind, once again, you can get all of them from the base game. You do not have to get them now. If you want to get them now, go for it, but you don't have to. When it comes to the exclusive unlocks, that's going to be coming down to the paragliders. If you make your way to Hateno Village, you're going to be finding Sage the Creepy Die Guy. It's been a long time since I said that. And you're going to get the option to rework the paraglider. Now, there are a lot of paragliders that you can unlock in game without having any amiibos. In this portion, I am just going to cover the amiibo exclusive paragliders. Previously, what was always called like the champion's tunic during Breath of the Wild has been rebranded to the tunic of memories. And if you were to scan yourself Archer Link, you're gonna be able to get yourself the tunic of memories fabric. Once you get the fabric, after you speak to Sage, he's going to be able to convert it into a paraglider. And then for 20 rupees, you could just change over whichever paraglider you want. The 8-bit link from the 30th anniversary is going to be getting you this, the pixel fabric one, which I kind of love. The Breath of the Wild Bokoblin amiibo is going to get you the Bokoblin fabric, which is loosely modeled after the Bokoblin mask. If you have Young Link from Super Smash Bros. amiibo or Ocarina of Time from 30th Anniversary amiibo, you are going to be getting the Lon Lon Ranch fabric. Either of them is going to unlock it. Once you unlock it once, it will not be able to be dropped from the other or from the first one in the first place. If you have the Majora's Mask 30th Anniversary Link, you can unlock Majora's Mask fabric, which is amazing because the eyes do like a creepy, eerie pulse, just like the Majora's Mask behind me. I would just like slowly fades on and then it fades off. The mask in the game, the Paraglider Sail, does the exact same thing. This is the Sword Spirit Fabric, because they don't want to use the word fee. The Sword Spirit Fabric is going to be unlocked only if you have the Skyward Sword Link from the 30th Anniversary set. This is the Hylian Hood Fabric, which can only be unlocked with the Rider Link Breath of the Wild amiibo. This is the Egg Fabric, which is pretty awesome, a picture of, you know, the, the, the egg from Koholid Co Island. Uh, this is only available with the Link's Awakening Switch amiibo. This is the Hyrule Princess fabric, which is Zelda Breath of the Wild's amiibo. This is the Bygone Royal fabric from the Wind Waker Zelda amiibo. This is the Goddess fabric, which is really, really lame for such an awesome name. But yeah, the Goddess fabric, that's unlocked from the Zelda and Loftwing amiibo. Is that what the, the parasail looked like? I'm gonna look this up. Oh, it was called the Sailcloth. Yep. Yep, it's the same same pattern as the sailcloth. Okay, it makes sense now. This is the Sheik fabric, which is unlocked by Sheik. This is the Zora champion fabric, unlocked by Mifa. The Goron champion fabric by Daruk. The Rito champion fabric by Rivali. And the Gerudo champion fabric, unlocked by Urbosa. This is the ancient Sheikah fabric, which I kind of love the style of it and the way that the, the wood plays off of that brown texture. I really like it. That's unlocked with the Guardian Breath of the Wild amiibo. This is my favorite one. It's the Mirror of Twilight fabric. It glows so bright and also in dark environments. You get it by three amiibos. Wolf Link from Twilight Princess HD from the Wii U, Twilight Princess Link 30th Anniversary Edition, and a Link from Super Smash Brothers. So a lot of people are going to have this one, which is good because it's the best one. This is the King of Red Lions fabric that you can unlock with Wind Waker Link from the 30th Anniversary or Toon Link from Super Smash Brothers. That's the reason earlier in the video I said I think you also get the Of The Wind set from Toon Link. 
This is the Princess of Twilight fabric, which is going to be unlocked with Zelda from Super Smash Brothers. And finally is the Demon King fabric, unlocked with Ganondorf from Super Smash Brothers. Once you go ahead and select one that you want, it's 20 rupees. He shoves you inside of his... I guess that's a fireplace. Yeah, with a whole bunch of up arrows. And then it just shoots you into the air with you getting to see your brand new paraglider. And the camera even like pans up a little bit more. I really like that. If you have like, you know, the full cap of time set and then you want to do your matching paraglider, it's a cool thing to do. Personally, for me, other than making this video explaining all of these unlocks, I, I would sell these off because it takes so much resources in order for you to fully upgrade them, like a lot of star pieces and rare ores. Once I'm in like the post, post, post game and I'm doing like the Korok seeds and like making sure I get all the mini bosses, that's probably the point in time that I'm gonna wanna go ahead and upgrade every single piece of armor, which I could also just go and repurchase that armor. So uh, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. While your non-amiibo armor, you're actually gonna be able to repurchase in Hateno Village after a series of side quests. All of your amiibo armor is only going to be from the bargainer statues that you're gonna be experiencing throughout the game. But I mean, let's, let's be honest here. This is hands down the best one, right? You're wearing like a giant mascot head and because the eyes in the game are just big black circles, it could very well be the eyes into the mascot head. Come on. How do you not love that? This is definitely my favorite one. Uh, none of these can be dyed, by the way. I figured that was obvious, but just letting you know, he can't dye them. It's a fabric thing. Well, there we go. I actually want to know your opinions on the fact that you can get all of these clothing items that were originally in Breath of the Wild, as well as the new ones that are, you know, for different versions of Link from the base game without amiibos. And now you're going to be getting a different unlock. Personally, I'm okay with it because it's just a fun little vanity thing. It's essentially the same thing as like paying for skins in a freemium game, right? But I want to know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.